In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the shuttle sort. So this is another sorting algorithm that is not mentioned by name in the OCR MEI specification as one that you have to know. Um, I am including it here um, because you could potentially be asked to perform a shuttle sort using a tracing algorithm. Um, so they'll tell you the algorithm in words and you've got to perform it. Okay, so it's best to have seen it previously. Um, so we're going to sort these six numbers into ascending order. Okay, and we're going to record the number of passes and comparisons as we go. So um, shuttle sort is quite similar to bubble sort, um, but instead of working your way all the way through the list in one pass, what you do at the start is you just focus your attention on the first two numbers. And each time we go down a pass, we are going to include another number into the list, okay? So the idea is that we, in each pass, we sort these into correct order. Then we're gonna add in another number, sort those into correct order, then add another number in, then another, then the final number, and our final pass should uh, sort them all into ascending order. So, First of all, 8 and 6, they're not in ascending order, so they need to be swapped. So it would be 6, 8, and then we've got the 2, 9, 5, 3. They remain where they are. So in the first pass, we make one comparison and we've made one swap. Okay? Right, so then what we do is we add 2 into the mix, and we now need to put these into ascending order. So we start off by comparing the 8 and the 2. So each time we bring in a new number, we check whether that number is in the correct position or not. So 2 gets compared with 8, and that's going to cause a swap, because they're not in the correct order. Then you're going to have 6 and 2. So imagine that they are swapped, and you now have 6, 2, 8. You would then need to compare the 2 with the 6 to check that they're in correct order, but they're not, so that it would cause another swap. So essentially, it shuttles 2 into the correct position. So you'd have 2, 6, 8, then 9, 5, 3. So how many comparisons were made in that second pass? Well, I had to compare the 2 and the 8. And then once they had been swapped, I had to compare the 6 and the 2 to make sure that the 2 was in the correct position. But they had to swap as well. So there was two comparisons that were made there. OK, so we now bring in 9, the next number into the list. So with 9, 9 needs to be compared with 8. But they're already in the correct order. OK, so I don't need to do anything now. So in the third pass, we make one comparison. 9 gets compared with 8, but no swap occurs. Right, so what we're going to do is we've got now got this list. So we're going to bring 5 in next. So 5 is going to need to get compared with 9, but that's going to cause a swap. Okay. Then 5 would have to be compared with 8. They would need to swap. Then 5 would need to be compared with 6. They swap. Then 5 needs to get compared with 2. Now, once 5 is compared with 2, we realise, oh, right, OK, so there's no swap required at that point. So we would have 2, 5, 6, 8, 9, 3. So 5 got compared with 9, it swapped. 5 got compared with 8, it swapped. 5 got compared with 6, it swapped. 5 got compared with 2, it's in the correct position. So we made 1, 2, three, four comparisons on the fourth pass. And finally, we bring three into the mix. So three needs to get compared with nine. They will swap. Three will then compare with eight, which will swap. Three will get compared with six and swap. Three will get compared with five and swap. And then three gets compared with two, no swap. So two, three, five, six, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four, five comparisons on the fifth pass. Okay, and so that is how we can perform a shuttle sort. 
So essentially what you're seeing is that each time you add a new number into the list, each time you go down a row into the next pass, uh, it shuttles the next number into the correct position.